Yo, what is up, people? Uh, this is a video that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> I have a very busy day today, so I doubt that I'm going to be able to finish it in one day. I um, had actually started making this video on the same topic, and I watched the video on Marxism today, and it explained uh, the topic uh, perfectly. And while I am not a Maoist, it did explain a lot of the... It brought up a lot of the critiques of anarchism, the pros um, to different forms of organization. It brought up uh, some of the things about anarchism and similarities between anarchism and different ideologies that I wanted to bring up. And so I think it is a perfect video to pair with, uh, with this video. Um, it's not going to be like a full-on review. I'm not going to like watch the whole video in it. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, anyways, I thought that it... A lot of the things that I was thinking about methods of organization are included in the video. And reasons why I wanted to kind of broaden my political tendency why I wanted to view myself as a little bit more of a pan-leftist while taking a lot from different tendencies. This video explained a lot of the new methods that I think that we should try, and it brought up a lot of great points. Yeah, hopefully uh, I'll have finished it soon, so. Which, uh, unfortunately, wasn't able to happen. The, the people at my uh, totally normal house in the Bahamas that I live in. Server living came in and they asked me what the fuck I was doing. Um, they said that the, the cops are on their way. I couldn't really explain it. They said the flag's everywhere. So uh, I don't know what's going to happen. But uh, hopefully I'll be able to finish it. And it's about why I'm not an anarchist anymore. I watched the video uh, that uh, Marxism Today, formerly Marxist Paul, put out about why anarchists should study MLM, Marxism, Leninism, Maoism. So when I was younger, growing up in the punk scene, uh, that's where I got my left-wing politics from, from that in the Iraq war. And in the punk scene, I was basically like a lifestyle anarchist. Many young people who are opposed to capitalism, especially in the imperialist core, are initially attracted to anarchism for its promotion of direct action and its anti-authoritarian methods of organizing. You know, if you see in my earlier videos, a lot of them are talking about things like shoplifting, like making propaganda, doing all that types of shit, going to every protest and, you know, event and rally that I could think of. However, after some time of being involved in anarchist movements, young revolutionaries often find themselves going around in circles and getting nowhere, jumping from one spontaneous protest movement to the next, each of which appears to lack concrete direction and so simply just fizzles out time and time again. They can find themselves caught up in movements that are more lifestyleist than revolutionary. But other than that, I was uh, very busy maintaining my drug addiction. Working and, you know, doing whatever I could at my workplaces to kind of, you know, like spread leftist ideas, spread like anti-capitalist yeah. ideas and whatnot. They can but. find themselves caught up in movements that are more lifestyleist than revolutionary, lack links with the masses and uphold a petty bourgeois individualism that prevents them from becoming genuine revolutionaries in service of the working class, moving beyond flash-in-the-pan stunt politics into actually building a revolutionary movement capable of overthrowing capitalism and building the desired stateless, classless, moneyless society. Rather than retreating from revolutionary politics altogether into something like social democracy, Maoism should be the next stop for disillusioned anarchists. With there has been a historical failure of anarchism to get much shit done. When I would argue about this online, I would always point to like the Zapatistas, the stuff that's going on in Syria and Rojava and parts of uh, Kurdistan. And I think that that movement has been extremely successful as far as they, you know, basically defeated ISIS. 
but their project is still ongoing, but they're facing attacks from Islamic extremists, they're facing attacks from Turkey, who is a member of NATO, and it would be hard to maintain. And eventually, the U.S. is going to turn on them. And they're facing attacks from Syria, the Syrian army as well. And, you know, all the, the paramilitaries that are aligned with them. But they still have their thing going. And I respect that a lot. So I'm not saying that anarchism isn't relevant. I have immense, tremendous respect for anarchists. Because when you look at the people who are most active in actual anti-fascist work in the west it's anarchists you know by and large of course i'm not saying that it's only anarchists doing that but you know they have been known to be very militant and effective in urban anti-fascism but as we've seen with the climate crisis with our political crisis with us not having a left-wing party in the united states anything close to it uh third parties aren't coming in and like taking the place of the other ones you know uh, we haven't seen any challenge to the hegemony of the um, Democratic Party and the you know Republican Party, which obviously they become a neo-fascist party. Like you, you know that they're involved with all that shit with the Supreme Court, how, like the abortion ruling, and like now the racist ruling, against affirmative action, homophobic attacks against trans people, uh, against LGBT people. Well, I'm not an anarchist anymore because I don't think that the state can be obliterated, you know, abolished overnight. It's like you know, like the very modest student loan forgiveness bill that Biden put in. They shot that down. So we have multiple fights on multiple fronts and we have actual fascists that are organizing and they are getting organized. They are training with weapons. They're learning how to fight. They're going out. They're doing propaganda. They're making propaganda videos. They're out there demonstrating and um, anarchism is a great way to push back against that. You know, anti-fascists anti -fascists can only do so much when they're like in unorganized, decentralized cells. I have nothing against decentralization. What I have against is the way that it's very unorganized. And I think that when you're dealing with organizations that need to need to be underground and they need to be uh, militant and they need to be well structured and they need to be disciplined. Uh, you don't see that that much with anarchists. There needs to be some type of, when you're running like an underground, like if you're talking about a real revolutionary movement, you need to have some type of structure and you need to have some type of well-disciplined, democratized, hierarchy from democratized people that are able to move up and structure. Show that they have, you know, like knowledge of, and show that they have, you know, like knowledge of theory and that they... Theory and practice. They know what to do. They're like ready to like commit to direct action and not just on like the uh, underground struggle, not just on like the but in like the legal struggle too. Uh, you need to attack from all sides. And when I say attack, I mean, you know, move against these policies, move towards something that is more uh, effective, you know, so we need to be fucking struggling from all sides. And they really get fucking organized, like, anarcho-syndicalism. Anarchists can do that. Like, we actually might need some more time for that. I think that, like, it's hard to have enough mutual aid to take care of all facets of society and in an anarchist uh, way. And I also have been, you know, doing a lot of reading about uh, Maoism, about Marxism, about uh, Marxism-Leninism, and the way that they organize, the way that they organize their groups. And I think that the best way to do this would be like some type of decentralized democratic centralism. An essential component of Maoism that anarchists should immediately relate to is strategic centralization, tactical decentralization. What this means in essence is that while the overall strategic objectives of the movement are agreed collectively and centrally, 
Their implementations are decentralized, with concrete conditions on the ground being a major component in forming which tactical steps are taken by the revolutionary movement in a given area at the local level. While at first, many anarchists might oppose the idea of the need for strategic centralization, combining it with tactical decentralization can go a long way to overcoming fears about authoritarianism and hierarchical organizational structures. In a revolution, there needs to be an overall central plan to get from capitalism to communism. But Maoism recognizes that the tactical implementation of that plan or overall goal of the revolution must be fluid and left up to the cadre and revolutionary masses on the ground, allowing for significant freedom at the local level. Because as we say, it's the masses themselves who make history. This model of strategic centralization and tactical decentralization can extend into virtually all areas of society, including the workplace. And what do I mean by that? I mean that you don't have one big group that just makes decisions for everyone because then if the feds get a hold of that, then they can take everyone down. I mean, other cells, but that use democratic centralism. And what is democratic centralism? Democratic centralism is basically, it's a democratic principle where you vote on uh, strategies, you vote on tactics, you vote on, on what you're going to do to move forward. And if the majority of the people vote to take some initiative, to take some step, you know, vote for the majority of the people vote to approve something, then that's what you go with, you know, and everyone has to agree to go with that. But I think it's been a very effective way for organizing revolutionary movements. Uh, you look at like the Panthers, you look at like the Red Army Faction, you look at like the Red Brigades, and um, all these groups had anarchists in them. You know, they had a lot of influence from anarchists. I like have a ton of like anarchist influence uh, in me, you know what I'm saying? Like in the way that I feel like we should organize and like the, in the way that I feel like a better society could be built. Like, like anarchism has influenced me massively. But I think that we need a stronger, more solid method of organization that we could use. And I have, um, I'm going to have videos, I'm planning on doing some videos that explain democratic centralism because it's a, it is complicated and it's been put into practice in many different ways and it's been bastardized in many different ways and it's been used to justify very authoritarian, non-democratic measures. But... And overall, I agree with the points that he makes in the video. There has been uh, a failure of anarchism historically to make huge gains. Look at the, what happened in the uh, Spanish Revolution, like the fight against fascism there. When they failed, that led to multiple decades of fascism. And where places were organized in like a more Marxist structure, those are the ones that uh, largely succeeded or have been carrying on a protracted people's war for uh, decades often. And the thing that I like about Maoism, well, I do not consider myself a Maoist, is that it's based on the mass line, which means always being connected to the people, never be feeling like you are over the people, and having, you know, never having some leadership that gets just condensed, like that gets some solid, you know, well insulated leadership that is never changing and isn't going to be held accountable if they start fucking up. You know, in like these real democratic centralist organizations, you can vote someone out, you know, you can vote someone out of a position of leadership just like that if they start fucking up. But if we really want to do this, if we really are serious about revolutionary change, we need better organization and we need discipline. Because a lot of the anarchists that I've seen, a lot of the anarchist groups that I've seen are very much lifestyleist. And what do I mean by that? I mean by like, they'll go to protest, you know, they'll do things like, uh, do things in the underground economy, you know, things like uh, boosting, you know, things like propaganda, you know, things like, uh, 
graffiti, you know, shit like that, and, and um, uprisings, you know, they're very effective when it comes to, like, fighting back the police. If the, like, the people that are in power don't get scared, if, like, these uh, large corporations don't lose any profits, don't lose any money, if they're, uh, if you just go and you're, you go to a protest, and basically all it is is just a peaceful march through the city where nothing happens, the system is totally fine with that. Fucking hell, they'll go and they'll get fucking approved from the city, approval from the city to be able to march and have these fucking movements. You know what I'm saying? Historically, what wins, like, what wins shit from the system, what wins shit from the government is when they are afraid, is when they are losing a lot of money, of when they're, like, the system isn't allowed to function normally. And for that type of thing, you need some organization. You need to have in internal security. You need to make sure that you're not getting infiltrated by people. Uh, and this isn't to say that anarchists don't have internal security, they do. But what I'm saying is that we need a bigger, more well-organized fighting force of revolutionaries that are willing to take the struggle to the next level. And what do I mean by that? I mean by things like general strikes. I mean things like anything on and up to you know aggressive ass because we don't we're running out of time the technology that the state and that the police are using against us like the i'm sure that the, there's cops that, and you know dudes from the inside the government that are watching this shit right now you know they mo they monitor all our shit we've known this for a long ass time they're able to track our movements they're able to see who we interact with they're able to do all of that shit. So internal security is very important. And I'm not going to go into that. But anyways, I um, just wanted to kind of co-sign that video a little bit. You don't need to be a Maoist. You don't need to be a Marxist. You don't need to be a communist. But we should learn from other tendencies and not have this one dogmatic thing where it's like, i to it no matter what and I won't work with anyone else. That's not going to get anything.